Welcome back to day three of the 6-5 Summit 2024. We are talking modern work and all things AI. You know, the entire theme of the summit, hopefully you've picked up, is all about AI. And that's either enterprises or consumers enjoying all that AI goodness or the continued build out of the AI infrastructure, whether that's in the data center, the data center edge, or even in devices. And if there's one conversation that has just been let's say, off the rails discussion, and that is the AI PC, fundamentally getting the goodness of all the AI, generative AI capabilities, and let's not forget about the machine learning capabilities, but having them resident on the device where it can be more performant, it can be more private, and some say even more secure. I couldn't imagine a better person to have this discussion about enabling the ecosystem here, Carla with Intel. Carla, great to see you. Great to be here, Pat. Thanks for having me. Yeah, so I'm excited about AI PCs. Lots of promises out there, a lot of excitement, and over the past uh, six months, I've seen varying degrees of people explaining what I think is the most important thing about it is like, what can I do on this? What can I do on these A AI PCs? And, and your day job is very much dialed in on how do I light up these experiences? So how, how are you at Intel uh, going to do this? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, lots to unpack there. I'll try to be. Uh, that was a, that was a that was a twenty twenty question first question. <laughs> I love it. I love it. There is so first and foremost, the excitement is absolutely there. We're excited. Our customers are excited. Our ISV partners are even more excited. So this is what Intel is best at, right? We've done this in the past. We continue to lead an ecosystem where we bring not only our hardware vendors together our software vendors together, and we also bring that marketing machine and our sales machine uh, to help all of these come forward and really drive and accelerate innovation, right? This is what Intel does best, and we're doing it again with AIPC. Now, how do we do this? Uh, the big question we get is, please tell us what we can do on an AIPC that we cannot do on a non-AI PC. Right. And a lot of it is materialized through the software, right? If you are a creator, if you're a small business owner, if you are a gamer, there are specific things and a whole host of range of things that we're seeing come through the market that will hopefully make you way more productive, more secure, save you battery life, and in some cases, truly do things that you cannot do today, right? We have several examples. Um, it all starts with engineering. It all starts with product truth. Part of how we do that is those deep co-engineering relationships that we have fostered over decades with what we call our top 100 plus ISVs. This is, you know, decades of work with content creators like Adobe, Wondershare, security players, uh, you know, like CrowdStrike, ESET, uh, Buffer Zone most recently. So I'm naming a host of different, like a snippet of different players that we've worked with uh, across all of those things where we really try to run the right workload on the right XPU. Some things meant to continue to run on CPU, some things that are critical to continue to run on GPU, and some now leveraging an MPU. And that is a lot of the back and forth that we have specifically with that software ecosystem so we help optimize their features. And this is where we're seeing uh, command text, command prompts to lighten a background, right? Or uh, anti-phishing scanning on our systems that have consistently been run on the cloud and can now be run locally, right? This is where we're seeing all of that pop up. And that, you know, fortunately, it's my day job with my team and I to see what else is out there. That's not only with our top 100, but also with our scale programs, right? For those kind of smaller and more medium-sized applications. Yeah, I'm glad you brought up a holistic view of it. You know, you talked about developers, uh, 
you know, ISVs, uh, and also marketing. Uh, sometimes we, we, we pretend that, you know, you show up with the goods and it's just going to happen. Uh, that has happened very little, uh, and marketing and communications and getting out there uh, is key. And I think we saw this full force at Computex, uh, out there last week, uh, literally, you know, Computex heart of the PC ecosystem, ODMs were there, OEMs were there, ISVs, uh, chip makers uh, all over, all over the place. Can you maybe review for us or people that weren't able to go to Computex or, or didn't read about what happened Computex, uh, what happened there? Yeah, no, super excited to have just come back from, from Taipei. I was actually there uh, at the end of March as well. So much excitement happening there. We, you know, we actually started a lot of this with our software developers directly. We met with them in, at the end of March. We launched an AI PC developer program specifically targeting software developers to really incent more of that innovation for AI PC. You know, obviously work very closely with the with the software and hardware ecosystem, but we're targeting the the, the developers as well. Handed out actual dev kits to get the hardware in the hands of developers, paired up with all of the uh, the tools that we drive. Had a great opportunity to meet with press and analysts and really excited about, you know, what uh, 20, the second half of 24 uh, has for us. Well, in this, in this new age of generative AI, and by the way, some of the same rules apply. Correct me if I'm wrong. I mean, we're looking at optimizing hundreds of models machine learning models, transformer models, right? That go from text to create an image, text to create a video, uh, going from uh, a type of photo to a different type of, of image. Can you just to kind of bring that to light, you just the number, the sheer number of models and the complexity uh, of those? Because I think they all have to work across CPU, GPU, and NPU, correct? That's right, Pat. So uh, last count, we were at, I think, 500 or so uh, AI-optimized models running best on Intel. And that is correct. That is across uh, image generation, uh, object detection, text, commands, uh, generative, et cetera. And those are running across you know, frameworks led by OpenVINO, Onyx, DirectML. You know, when we say broad and open ecosystem, that's exactly where that gets materialized. And these are all models that then create that flywheel, right? This optimization really helps, again, run the right workload on the right XPU. And it allows developers to test, right? They're also getting to know uh, what is running best where. And it's not, it's not something that automatically gets, uh, gets learned. It's something that they've got to go test. And so putting all of this in the hands of developers uh, to see that innovation out there is, is incredible. We're seeing, uh, we're seeing things where you can command an image to be lighter. You don't even need to reach right. your keyboard and your mouse. Uh, think of the applications there, right? We shared uh, earlier this year, OmniBridge, gesture to with American Sign Language to text, English text, unlocking right. all sorts of opportunities uh, for a lot of, you know, the population that is, that can now engage in the workplace differently, right? And that's just the beginning. Yeah. So can you, can you give us an idea? Like what's the nature of these, are these like relationships that you just started? Are these small companies, big companies? I mean, what does this look like? I mean, listen, I've been doing this longer than I want to uh, admit uh, I started doing product marketing for PCs in 1990. Uh, and, you know, I, I've been in and around that. What do those relationships look like? So they go back many, many years, right? So uh, we work with not only the kind of top 100, we also work with what we call the smaller and the scale uh, partners. With the top 100s, those relationships, some of those relationships go back decades. Right. We have our application engineers that actually know some of their applications, uh, in some cases, better uh, than some of our own technologies. That's how deeply embedded we are. At the end of the day, the nature of these relationships is based on 
product value, right? Platform technologies that we bring to the market uh, so that the software can leverage every bit of it, right? In a way that makes their application better. That is typically a, a, a more deeply technical relationship, engineering relationship from a scale standpoint for a lot of the smaller and medium-sized ISVs and developers. We've got frameworks and tools and all of those 500 plus models that we just talked about so they can leverage in a more do-it-yourself method. And then we wrap a lot of our marketing programs uh, alongside that because it's very valuable to a lot of our uh, ISV ecosystem, testimonials, collaterals, trainings, all the way to the edge with some of the retail sellers and our large enterprise sellers. That is very important because at the end of the day, they, they're they looking for that scale to land their applications on, which guess who brings that scale, right? Intel. Intel's the one that's driving uh, AI PCs at scale. And we've been very public about this, right? We will be driving 100 million units of AI PCs throughout 2025. So they're betting on Intel because they know Intel can drive that. Yeah, I'm glad you brought that up. And and we were talking about the marketing. We were talking about the technical competency. But in the end, it's all about business and the economic opportunity that Intel can provide to ISVs, either in upgrades for, let's say, an upgraded AI feature, uh, maintaining market share, or potentially getting a jump on the competition who's not uh, doing optimizations. Uh, you know, let's you know, let's say it's an image editor versus another image editor, and it's kind of a a feeding frenzy at this point. And, you know, I really do believe that this is going to be the biggest economic opportunity from a growth standpoint. It's going to be very similar, like we saw with the internet, uh, going from non-multimedia to, to multimedia, um, going from desktops to notebooks. We are right now in active enabling with a couple of partners and there's very compelling things coming from uh, videos as well. Yeah, We've seen a lot of this in the past, but what we haven't seen is the ability to record a video, just like we're doing, uh, you know, just like we all do day to day. And in some cases we may say the wrong word and we typically would stop, re-record or go splice that particular word in there. Right. Now we're able to find the word, <laughs> replace it and then use AI to actually clone your voice and smooth that out in the video like that. Local. I'll tell you what, that, that's super exciting. This is really valuable stuff that, that I just know inherently is going to excite people. And I believe, I, I said this on your stage at CES, that we're going to kick off this super cycle. It's going to take a while, right? 2004, 2005, but... Uh, it, it's there and the hard work that, that you are doing at Intel with your ISVs, with your partners and your engineers are really the difference maker because people don't buy hardware for the sake of hardware. They buy because of the new experiences and either the joy and fun they can get out on the consumer side. There's the hardcore productivity uh, uh, opportunities uh, there as well. So I, I you are a, a busy person and I'm sure your team is working overtime uh, to get this build out. And it was apparent to me at Computex, that's exactly uh, what you did, but you're not done. Absolutely. And well, you know, it takes a village. It takes a village to bring together the hardware ecosystem, the software ecosystem, the marketing uh, machine, as I call it, uh, to ultimately drive better experience to our customers, right? Our, our consumers, our creators, uh, our small business owners, let's not forget our enterprise customers. It, it takes a village and we're excited. And you're right, ISVs are, uh, many of our software partners are running their own business and they're they're competing on value. Uh, and this is unlocking additional value. What I like the most is, are the examples that we're seeing that we're helping uh, enable where AI is really being put to good use, right? Experiences that are enabling certain populations with disabilities to now participate yes. in a productive working environment and allowing us, the public, to, 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 to be there, right? Um, and so we're seeing a lot of that. There's a lot of AI that's being put for nefarious reasons, unfortunately, that creates fear, but we're also right there to put AI 
uh, to identify that, detect those, make it safer for consumers and, and for the public. So we're yeah. excited. We're super excited. Carla, thanks again uh, for coming on here. Day three of the 6.5 Summit 2024, Modern Work. Uh, it's all about AI, and I think it's going to be about AI, enabling AI for a while. So thank you very much for coming on. Thanks for having us, Pat. Thanks for tuning in. Hit that subscribe button. We appreciate your time. Take care.